dog food video. I have seven other homemade dog food recipes on my channel, so definitely make sure to check those out. This is my eighth homemade dog food video, and I have so many other homemade dog treat videos as well. I am back again with another recipe. If you guys are new here, this is Blissy Girl, and this is Bentley, and we are here to share another recipe with you guys. My dogs seriously love this recipe, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Alrighty, so here's all of the ingredients we're gonna be using for this recipe. I have had so much fun playing around in the kitchen, creating this recipe for my dogs. I'm using some ingredients that I've never used before in my homemade dog food, and my dogs have been eating these ingredients the last several months, and they love it. So let me share with you guys everything I have. First up, I have six pounds of some ground pork, and this is a new protein for my dogs. I usually always use chicken, turkey, beef, and I really wanted to experiment with some pork, and my dogs love it. But feel free to sub this out for any protein that your dog may like. I also have some sweet potatoes. This is a staple that I use in almost every single homemade dog food recipe. It's just amazing for their digestive system. My dogs love sweet potatoes. They're also great to just give as snacks. You can give them raw, you can give them cooked. So I always love adding this into my homemade dog food. I also have some carrots, which is an amazing vegetable for your dogs, really easy for them to digest. Celery is a new vegetable that I started adding into my homemade dog food, and my dogs love celery. It is great in moderation for your dogs. You can definitely sub out celery for any kind of vegetable that you like for your dog, but I love adding in celery. I love switching up the vegetables in my homemade dog food. Every week looks different for my dogs. I switch between all of the recipes that are already on my channel. Sometimes I do celery, sometimes I don't. I think there's just so much benefits switching between different animal proteins and different vegetables. I also started adding in some lentils and my dogs love lentils. It is an amazing source of protein. I did soak these overnight so that way it's really easy for my dogs to digest and it also makes cooking it a lot easier. And this just is such a good superfood. Look up all the benefits of lentils. So many amazing ones. We are using quinoa today for our carb. I alternate between quinoa, white rice, brown rice, whole wheat pasta is really good. And I really like adding quinoa. I also love brown rice. Most of all of my recipes has brown rice in it, but wanted to switch up the carb this time and my dogs go crazy for quinoa. So a great little carb to add to this homemade dog food. Green beans is one of my favorite vegetables to add to homemade dog food. It just is amazing for dogs. They digest it really well. So many great benefits here. So I'm using 12 ounces. It is frozen. You can use fresh if you want. However, I like to save time in the kitchen if I can. So using frozen vegetables is just so much easier. Sometimes I'll even buy the carrots frozen. So that way I can just like dump and go. I did have to like rinse and chop these, but feel free to use frozen vegetables. It just makes things so much easier. And then of course we need some fiber and this is an entire can of some pumpkin puree. You can use so many different things to add fiber. I'll even sometimes add a whole apple into my homemade dog food, but pumpkin puree, my dogs love it. I use it to make homemade dog treats. I use it in their homemade dog food. So many amazing benefits. This just really solidifies their stool. So I love adding this. And then one of you guys actually told me about this bone broth. It's like a powder and you add it to water and you mix it and it makes like dog bone broth. And I love it. I actually just ran out. So I just ordered another one. It will be here tomorrow. So for this recipe today, we're going to be using some water, but definitely feel free to use bone broth. You definitely want to use a dog bone broth because a lot of the ones you buy at like the grocery store for humans has a lot of ingredients like garlic and onions that are not safe for dogs. So definitely use a dog approved bone broth. You can order it from Amazon. So I'll leave the link to it down below. And then the final thing we're going to be adding is just some coconut oil. I'm only going to add about a tablespoon at the bottom of the Instant Pot so that way nothing sticks. And then when everything is cooked, we're gonna add the rest of it. This is about three tablespoons of some organic coconut oil. So amazing for your dog's skin. If your dog suffers from like dandruff or just like really flaky skin, highly recommend adding coconut oil. Fish oil is really good as well. That's another alternative if you don't have coconut oil, but coconut oil is like my favorite oil to use in my recipes. For this recipe, I'm gonna be using my Instant Pot, my good old pressure cooker. 
I love using a pressure cooker for my homemade dog food recipes. It makes things so much easier. You can kind of just dump and go and it does the work for you. However, I had hundreds of you guys ask me for stovetop recipes. So I do have two on my channel. I will have those linked down below. So if you don't have a pressure cooker, definitely check out those recipes because I cooked those on my stovetop. But today we are using my pressure cooker. Let's get everything added in. All right, let's start adding everything into our Instant Pot. We have Bliss Seeker right here. Are you ready to help Mama? Are you ready? You excited for homemade dog food? Mwah, I love you. You gonna help Mama with the homemade dog food? <laughs> All right, so I wanna add a little bit of oil to our Instant Pot. That way nothing sticks. This is about three tablespoons of some coconut oil, but I'm only gonna add about a tablespoon to the bottom. So that way nothing sticks and we don't get that burn signal because we definitely don't want that. We're gonna start with adding our sweet potato at the bottom, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our carrots in. Let's add in the green beans. I'm gonna add the pumpkin puree when everything's all cooked, as well as all of this extra like coconut oil we have. So we're gonna save this. Now we're gonna add in our ground pork. So I love adding in the protein last because it's super wet and moist. And that way it can kind of travel down to the bottom of the Instant Pot as it's cooking. That's gonna cook the quinoa and the lentils very well and also prevent that burn signal from coming on. Now I'm just kind of flattening everything in the Instant Pot. This is definitely filled up to the brim, but don't worry because as it cooks, it's definitely going to shrink down in size and it will be perfect. So I'm just kind of flattening it out a bit. So this is how it's going to look when everything's added in. You definitely want that meat on top. And then we're gonna add the lid onto the Instant Pot and we are ready to pressure cook. All right, let's get the top on. Okay, so you wanna make sure your pressure cooker is on ceiling. And then for this recipe, I'm gonna do 30 minutes. I usually do between 25 and 35 minutes. We're gonna do 30 just to be safe to make sure all of this meat gets cooked. Okay, so we're gonna hit pressure cook, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set it for 30 minutes. And it's gonna be pressure cooked on high. It does take about 10 minutes for it to come to pressure and then it will start the countdown for 30 minutes. You guys, the timer just went off. Are you excited, Pussy Girl? You excited for your homemade food? You guys have not met Denim. Well, you've met him because he's been in some of my videos. Denim is my mom's dog. He's visiting. Come here, Denim. He's staying with us for the week. And where's Bentley? Come here, Bent. <laughs> Bentley. There's Bentley. Lucy knows that timer. Do you know when that timer goes off, it's time to eat? So we're gonna let Denim try the recipe because you haven't had my homemade dog food before, Denim. You haven't had it before, so you're gonna try it. Okay, Instant Pot just finished. I'm gonna go ahead and do a manual release. You do wanna let it sit for about five minutes before doing a manual release. Be very careful because a lot of steam's gonna come out. to make sure the red button completely comes up before opening the Instant Pot. So let's open it. Wow. So I'm gonna share with you guys how it looks, but first let's add in the pumpkin puree. And we're gonna add in the rest of our coconut oils. This is about two tablespoons. And now I'm gonna use my little masher tool. I love this for my homemade dog food because it just gets everything mashed up nicely and well incorporated. So let's mash it now. Just mixing it all up, getting all those vegetables at the bottom. This is Perfect, you guys. It turned out so good. The quinoa is nice and tender. The lentils are nice and soft. The vegetables are perfect. We just want to get all of those sweet potatoes that kind of got at the bottom. Blissy Girl is here waiting patiently. It has to cool down, Blissy Girl. And then it'll be time to eat, okay? Smell good? You can't eat it yet. It's hot. 
You smell it? <laughs> it turned out amazing. You can see how fluffy everything is. The dogs are going to love it. Food is all ready. Lucy, are you excited? Are you excited? Come here. Mama fixed your dinner. It's almost done, okay? But this is all of the food that we were able to get from this recipe, so you can see it quite a bit. That is why I love having a 10 quart Instant Pot because you can really make a lot. I even went ahead and fixed the dog's dinner as well. So it is ready to go and it is their dinner time. So let's feed them and you will see how much they love this recipe. Here's Blissy Girl's homemade dog food. You can see she is so excited, yay! All right, let's eat Blissy Girl, come on, come on. She's already in the down position. You are so good, Blissy girl. Can you show them side? Down, good girl, stay. As you can see, she's so obedient and ready for her food. You ready? Eat, good girl. You like mama's cooking, Blissy girl? How is it? <laughs> you can see she loves it. Let's feed Bentley. Here is Bentley's food. He is retired from the slow bowl. He is doing so good without his slow bowl. Bentley, you're so obedient. Good boy. Eat. Good boy, Bentley. We'll see girls getting every single drop and bite. <laughs> I tried to recruit Blissy from the slow bowl, but she ended up vomiting. So that's why she has a slow bowl. It just slows her down and allows her to eat her food nice and slow. Hopefully we can retire the slow bowl soon, but definitely don't want her vomiting. So this is what works right now to kind of just slow her down and let her eat at a slow pace. And Lee has finished his food and he goes straight to his bed. It's his favorite place in the house. Good boy, Bentley, how was it? Was it yummy? So Denim is not used to fresh food, so I'm only giving him a little bit. I don't wanna give him too much and give him an upset stomach. You definitely have to transition your dogs to fresh food. It took me about seven days to transition Bentley. About seven to 10 days is a good rule of thumb, just slowly introducing it. He has had fresh food before, just not exclusively. So he should be great with this. Are you ready to try it? You ready to try it, Denim? Do you like it, Denna? I think he likes it too. <laughs> you love it? I wanted to share with you guys the supplement powder that I add to the homemade dog food. This is an amazing one. I love the brand NutriVet. I use a few different brands that I love, but this one I just discovered actually from one of you guys is a pet nutritionist and you commented in my video and told me how much you love this one and that you recommend it to all of your clients. So I wanted to try it and it is really good. It has all of the vitamins and minerals and calcium, all of the things. So it's just a one and only supplement powder. And it also tells you exactly how much to add. I just added into their morning serving. Here's a list of the ingredients. So all of the nutrients that your dog needs. So I will leave the link to this down below. You definitely want to add supplements to the homemade dog food just to make sure it is a balance. And then I also give them like homemade dog treats as well that have like beef liver and chicken liver in it. So let me know if you guys want to see my chicken liver dog treats. Treat. That's another really healthy way you can sneak in some extra like vitamins and minerals into your dog's diet. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. As always, I'll have the recipe typed down below for you guys. I also wanted to announce I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So thank you guys for being here. I'm going to be giving away a pressure cooker to one of you guys. My exact one is always sold out. So I found another one and I'm going to be shipping it directly to your house. I'll pop a picture of it on the screen. It's actually better than mine because it is 12 quarts. So I will have all of the rules of how to get inserted in the description box. So definitely check that out because I'm only running the giveaway for two weeks. I will also pin a comment of all of the rules as well. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I seriously love reading through all of you guys' comments, seeing all of your testimonies about how my recipes has changed your dog's life. I get so emotional reading through the comments. Seriously, the best comments on my homemade dog food videos. Thank you guys again, and I will be seeing you all very soon with a brand new video. Bye.